Every Sunday, the pastor would stand at the front of his church and with a booming voice finish his rousing sermon with a plea. Each week I go to a nearby town and serve the poor, the oppressed, and the downtrodden. What do you do? How do you show your compassion to those in need? People would applaud the minister's closing remarks, and everyone would wave him off at the end of the service as he hurried away in his little car. The truth, however, was that each week he would go to a golf course and play a leisurely eighteen holes away from his congregation, family, and friends. This deception had been going on for years, but eventually it came to the attention of some angels. They were furious at his lies and reported the situation directly to God. After a little consideration, God said to the angels, I will visit with this minister on Sunday and teach him a lesson he'll never forget. Sure enough, next Sunday God showed up at the church. Yet again the minister informed his congregation that he was going to go serve the poor before leaving for the golf course. This time, however, God intervened. When the minister took his first shot, the ball took off, flew through the air, bounced onto the green, and dropped into the hole. The minister was amazed. At the second hole the same thing happened, and the third, and the fourth, right through to the last hole. With his last stroke, the minister sliced the ball badly, but still it curved around and, like all the others, found the hole in one. All the while the angels in heaven watched what took place in utter disbelief. By the time God returned, they shouted, I thought you were going to punish the minister for all his lies, but instead you gave him the perfect round of golf. That may be true, replied God with a smile. But ask yourself this, who is he going to tell? I desire your desire. Believing that there is some supreme being above and beyond the world we experience, a being who loves us and cares about what happens in our lives, is natural. We want to believe. To understand this, let us reflect upon the nature of desire. Most of us will agree that the things we love are not as important to us as the people we love. We desire a myriad of things in life, such as wealth, health, and longevity, but in the midst of these, we will be quick to point out that our loved ones stand over and above them all. Those few individuals who bring life and light to the very depths of our being elicit the most profound and intense longings in our heart. And yet, true as this description may be, it is also incomplete and inadequate. For when we speak of those we love as more desirable than everything else that might capture our attention, we end up subtly placing them on the same level as everything else we desire. If we simply long for our partner in a more intense and inflamed way than a promotion at work, a holiday in the Bahamas, or a home by the beach, we end up treating them in much the same way, as one more thing we want. Such a description of those we love, while disguising itself as a compliment, does them a profound injustice, failing to delve into their unique and transcendent place in our life. For our desire for those we love is not merely superior to all other desires, it is of a fundamentally different kind. Imagine that most painful of experiences, the loss of our beloved. Most of us know what it is like to be scorched by that black sun, to lose someone for whom we would gladly lose everything to save. If we take a moment to reflect upon such a loss in our own life, we find that when we lose the one we love more than life itself, we do not simply lose something we desire, we begin to lose the very ability to desire. In other words, when we lose our beloved, we find that the other things that once tempted us lose their seductive power. Thoughts of promotions, vacations, and new homes lose all of their glittering appeal. A chilling melancholy slowly envelops us, fading our once vibrant world into various shades of gray. In these times we discover that our beloved is not simply the object of our desire, but the very source of it. In that dark dungeon of despair, we find that the other is the one who invests our activities with meaning and significance. Any of our achievements, while once meaningful to us, now signify nothing. What we learn from this traumatic experience is that the loss of our beloved results in our world being cut adrift from its sun and descending into even greater darkness. For more than being the mere objects of our deepest despair, those we love are the ones who birth and sustain our very ability to desire. 
It is not, then, our Beloved's mere existence that lights up our life with meaning. It is our Beloved's desire for us that has this luminous effect. We might even still be with the one we love, but if we feel that they no longer love us, we experience the profound pain and suffering described above. In contrast, the one we love may be far away, and yet their longing and desire for us can sustain us in their absence. So then, what we really desire, what I really desire, is the desire of those I desire.